to the third episode of the Hub Garden Knitwear podcast. My name is Hannah and I'm very happy that you decided to spend your time with me today. This is a podcast all about knitting, about my projects and at the end of each episode I will share a little bit of knitting tips and things that I've learned over the past years and in this episode we will talk about color work knitting. Thank you so much for all the kind and helpful comments that you left me under the last episode. I had asked about the neckline of my fiber artist sweater, which is um, a sweater with a colorwork panel on the front and a um, rectangular neckline. And uh, for me, I um, was a little bit afraid if the neckline is a little bit too wide, but uh, most of you answered that they actually enjoy a wider neckline and uh, that it would always be possible to wear like a scarf or something like this with a sweater. I have worn the sweater now for several days and I must say for me the neckline definitely is a little bit too wide. I have never been able to wear the sweater without like a shawl or something that uh, would cover my neck a little bit. But <laughs> I mentioned in the last episode that uh, I always get um, cold very easily. so. I kind of expected that. So now I'm thinking about maybe um, knitting a little um, like a turtleneck thing that you can wear underneath that's just like a little bit um, of fabric like this. I think um, it is sometimes called uh, a, a dicky maybe and um, I, will, I will just try that out and see how that works and if I like it more. But uh, since this is a warmer sweater anyway, uh, I do not plan to release it uh, before autumn. So um, I will hopefully be able to try that out and uh, wear it and see if I um, like the whole situation around the neck better. So I will keep you updated on that. I am wearing my uh, Abenteuer sweater today. Abenteuer is uh, the German word for adventure. And I named uh, the sweater this way because I knit it during a road trip that I did with a friend. We drove her car all around Germany, had a little vacation, visited many lovely places and I uh, knit the sweater during that time. And um, now whenever I wear it I can remember the wonderful time that we spent together and uh, I just thought that it was um, a lovely name for this design. So um, this is a top-down circular yoke sweater, so you cast on the neckline, work a tiny section of ribbing and then this color work yoke, then you split for body and sleeves and work them all in the round uh, separately. And um, the yarn that I used is um, from Anke, a local to me um, indie dyer under the label Garn Stories. And uh, I really love um, her yarn. It has uh, all these nice little speckles, as you can see here. And um, I really love all the different colors. They are very bright oranges and pink and also a little bit of blue and green here. So um, this is uh, a sweater that I enjoy very much. And uh, this is some of the yarn that I had left over. Here you can see the speckles really really well I believe. And uh, I um, have... Here's the label. I just couldn't find it. So here it is. This 
is uh, so it is Gan stories and it is um, 100 100% 100 superwash merino and has 400 meters per 100 grams and I think I knit this sweater either on three millimeter or 3.5 millimeter needles I'm not quite sure um, but you can find uh, the pattern on Ravelry and uh, I will link it in the description below if you feel that the shawl behind me and the sweater that I'm wearing look kind of um, similar, then you're not mistaken. I had uh, quite some yarn left over when I finished the sweater and so I decided um, that I wanted to use it for a shawl. And um, I had a, a third skein from um, Garn Stories which um, is called uh, Funky Business I believe. And this is, by the way, this is the only um, uh, actual colorway. The other ones uh, both were one of a kinds, and uh, this also has like these lovely colors and speckles here that I love really much. And so I, um, since I had these three colors and lots of leftovers, I decided to make this shawl. This shawl is uh, called my Creative Flow shawl, and um, it uh, is currently in the testing phase, and it is so much fun this test because, um, well, all tests actually are fun because I um, get to see different color combinations that my testers use and uh, see them get creative, see them, see my design come to life for the first time. So that is always very exciting. But this test actually is a little special because the pattern for this shawl does not only include row by row instructions so that you can replicate my sample, but um, it also includes a recipe um, that uh, helps you to combine all the different stitch patterns and the shawl in your own unique way. So there's three um, main stitch patterns. I um, hope I can insert like a little close-up here for you. There is um, a stitch that I call star stitch because it has um, the shape of little stars. And um, then there is an eyelet stitch, which um, also kind of gives the impression of um, tiny cables, if you know what I mean, but it's actually just um, typical lace with increasing and decreasing. And then um, there is uh, this third stitch that I call mesh stitch. And um, in the pattern, I give detailed instructions on how you can mix and match these stitch patterns to create your own shawl. So the fun part in this test for me is not only to see the different color combinations that my testers use, but also um, to see how they get creative and um, create their own very beautiful versions of this shawl. This is so exciting and the test is almost um, coming to its end. I think we have about um, six days or so left. So um, the shawl will be um, the next release that you can expect to see. And I'm very excited about this one. I am, I am giving you a little teaser, I guess. I will put up some of the pictures that I'm going to share for release. And I really hope you, you like them. So next up, I would like to show you what I'm currently knitting on. As you know, I always only have one project at a time. And uh, this one I uh, showed you uh, in the last episode, but I had only um, uh, just worked a little bit of the yoke. And now I have made quite some progress, I would say. So let me get this a little bit untangled here. And so here we are. It is this lovely lace yoke sweater that does not have a name yet and I have worked both sleeves which are about um, elbow length and um, I have finished quite a bit of the body as well. Uh, it uh, currently hits um, 
like around my waist, maybe a little lower, I will insert a little video here of me um, modeling it for you. And um, to be honest, I'm very, very happy with it so far. I really like uh, the lace at the neckline and um, this little curvy edge that it makes. And um, I really can't wait to finish this. I'm very excited. I hope that this can be um, the next design that can go into the testing phase, but I still need to write up the pattern. And um, as you might know, if you have been following me on Instagram for quite uh, some time, I uh, work together with a tech editor. She is called Frauke and she lives um, in the same city as me. And um, she is a professional tech editor, which means that um, I give her my um, fully written and graded pattern and she will um, proofread it for me, check for spelling mistakes, um, rework all the math that all the sizes are actually correct and fitting and uh, see that uh, generally the um, pattern is as um, free of errors as it can be. And that is a process that I always do before the test knit. So if you um, ever want to test knit for me, you can expect a fully um, layouted, it, formatted and um, uh, tech edited pattern. So um, usually there are no major issues that are discovered during the test knit which um, I think is comforting both for me and the test knitters that their, um, the risk of, of greater issues is, is very, very low. Yes, so I have, um, as you will probably expect, not cast on anything new because I still work on this summer sweater design and um, that's uh, kind of everything um, project-wise that I can share today. So let's chat a little bit about cull work. There are actually um, three different techniques that all run um, under the uh, name color work. And the thing that most of you will probably think of when you hear color work is actually stranded color work, which is, um, for example, this, this sweater that I'm wearing right now. Then there is also um, mosaic knitting and then there's intarsia. And I would like to give you like a little introduction into those techniques and then uh, share a little bit about how I work uh, stranded color work and see um, if I maybe can share some tips to make it easier for you if you want to knit stranded color work as well. So um, let's start with, with the stranded color work. Um, Let's have a look at it. I have another example here. So stranded color work is when you work um, with at least two colors in a row. So um, it is most obvious when you um, see this little dot row, I have um, always like three stitches in blue and then one stitch in this cream color. And um, I alternate, it, alternate this pattern um, over the whole round. So um, and uh, on the back of the work, and this is why it, it is called a stranded color work, you have um, like this little float, this little floats. These are uh, the strands of yarn that are, that are not uh, used on the front. So you can see I have this um, rather uh, obvious um, cream float here. And this is where uh, the cream yarn is not shown in the front, as you can see here. So. Um, this is what uh, is called a uh, stranded color work. And um, uh, maybe some of you um, always wonder what the difference between stranded color work in general and Fair Isle is. Well, um, for once, Fair Isle um, are traditional color work patterns from the, the Fair Isle region. And um, Fair Isle patterns uh, traditionally only ever use um, two colors per round, whereas uh, stranded color work in general can use um, more than uh, two colors, like three, four, five, doesn't matter. And um, a traditional fair eye pattern will um, only ever have um, two colors in a round. But of course, not all um, color work patterns that have two colors in a round are traditional fair eye. For example, this um, sweater that I'm wearing here has obviously no 
um, more than uh, two colors, but uh, this is not a traditional Fair Isle pattern though. Okay, so that was a short introduction into stranded color work. And next, let's have a look at uh, intarsia. So intarsia is a technique that you can use if you want to have um, large um, sections of one color within um, another color, for example. If you have uh, like a children's sweater with uh, like a little red heart on it or something like that. That is usually something you would use um, intarsia for. So I have an example swatch here. So um, these, these stripes are obviously only stripes, but if you imagine like these darker sections and this lighter sections and this line here, this is like where the intarsia happens. So um, intarsia is a technique that uh, is usually only used in, in um, flat projects. It is, I don't know if it's actually impossible, but I have never um, heard of someone who has worked um, in Taja in the round. I can explain that in, in a second, but that is something um, I would be very interested about. Have you guys any experiences in knitting in Taja in the round? Because I don't think I would know how to do that except for cutting the yarn every time. So let me try to explain this. If you start working the swatch, imagine I work this section in the darker color and then I would obviously have to switch the yarn and work this section in the lighter color. So at this point the working yarn of the lighter color is dangling like here if you imagine and the dark one is still at this point so if I work um, flat and I work uh, the wrong side row I would work with the lighter color up until here and then I would be in the very lucky position that the dark yarn is still waiting for me right here and I can intertwine those yarns maybe you can see it on the on the back I always um, need to wrap those around each other, just just as if you would do it like this. Just like that. And then you can just continue with um, the dark color that was waiting for you here and work the row um, to the end. So you um, would switch the, the balls of yarn you are working with every time when you reach this line. So this is why I, um, I, I do not know how you would work um, uh, intarsia in the round. Let's, let's imagine this is a whole sweater, right? So let's say I start working in the round with the darker color, then I switch to the lighter color here and work all the way I need to work. And then at some point I would want to switch back to the darker color, right? But the end of the darker color would still be like here where I left it off. So I would kind of have to to cut it off there or something like that to gen, just work back till here. So I'm, I'm not sure if I make this uh, easy to understand, but um, I don't know any way to work um, this technique in the round. I would always work it flat. But um, it also is much more comfortable to work flat because you can um, only ever use one color at a time and you only switch one so um, for most of the work it would feel just like a normal stockinette project. The third um, technique uh, in color work is mosaic knitting and this is an example for it. This is my um, shifty sweater from uh, this is a design from Andrea Maury and um, it might look quite similar to stranded color work on the first uh, glimpse, but it actually only ever uses one color uh, in each round. And the way that this um, yeah, almost stranded color work looking pattern is achieved is by um, working 
only the stitches that are supposed to be in the color that you are currently working with and slipping all other stitches. So um, you would always have a pattern like knit two, slip one, knit two, slip one around the row. And um, you might be able to see it like if you have a real close look, I hope you can see that maybe, that the stitches that are in the darker blue are always a little bit elongated around this area where the little light blue uh, stitches are. I'm not sure if that is visible here, but this is because um, when I work the row with the light blue, then I slip all the stitches that are in this darker blue. And this is how this pattern is achieved. Um, similar as in uh, stranded color work, you will have floats on the wrong side. So if you are um, a little intimidated by working stranded color work, then uh, mosaic knitting would be a great way to start um, because it actually feels a little like working stripes because you only ever have one color per round and slip all the other stitches in between. So this is a very, very easy technique which gives you uh, stunning results and would be uh, an awesome way to um, try color work for the first time if you have not yet um, uh, dipped your toe into that pool. So, these are the three techniques. And now um, let's uh, talk a little bit about what um, can help you achieve um, a very beautiful and even stranded color work um, knitting. Here are my, my tips and tricks that I've learned over the past year. So the first thing that I would suggest is don't ever use anything, um, any, any yarn that is not mostly um, wool or at least mostly animal fibers. I would, as, um, as a beginner color work netter, I would really not recommend using uh, a plant yarn. That is because those yarns have a lot less elasticity than um, a woolen yarn and will make it much more difficult to get the stitches neat and even. And it will also be a little bit harder on your hands. So um, if you want to try color work for the first time, it will be much easier if you do it with a woolen yarn. It is not impossible to work it with um, plant fibers, it can totally be done, but um, then I would also think about um, what kind of a project do you actually want to achieve. So um, um, as color work, stranded color work projects have these floats on the back of the work, they are usually a little bit warmer than um, just simple stockinette. So I'm not quite sure if if like a cotton stranded color work does really make sense to me. I know there are many patterns out there for like short sleeved all over color work um, designs, uh, of some of which are, are really, really beautiful, but I kind of never get those very well because I don't think I could ever wear, wear them. So I have already told you in the last episode that I am a person who tends to get cold very easily. And as I said, color work is like, um, creates a thicker, dense, no, not dense, but like a warmer fabric than stockinette. And so working such a warm fabric in like summer or spring yarn, I don't, I don't think that is a very good combination, but that's just personal preference. It will definitely be easier to work color work in a woolen yarn because of the elasticity and because of uh, the little scales that animal fibers have, because um, those scales help to keep the strands on the wrong side attached to the wrong side so that you um, do not um, accidentally grab them while putting the sweater on or taking it off and you you don't have the risk of, of grabbing onto one of those floats and accidentally pulling on it. So that is uh, the first, first suggestion. If you want to work stranded color work, um, use a woolen yarn. 
The second thing that I would suggest if you are a new um, color work knitter, especially for stranded color work, um, this is a technique that most people find a lot easier to work in the round when you only have to work knit stitches in different colors than um, working it flat, having to do the, the wrong side row working pearl stitches. That being said, well, there are a lot of patterns out there um, who are complete stranded color work patterns that are worked flat and that is totally possible. But if you are a beginner to stranded color work, you can make it easier on you if you um, work it in the round instead. So, um, and then, well, I know that people, many people are quite afraid of working stranded color work, but I actually don't believe that um, that, is, that is something to be afraid of. It is quite easy. The only thing you need to get, um, you get into is to, um, get your tension right. So maybe you remember when you first started knitting that the tension of the yarn was the most difficult part. And I think in stranded color work that is really just the same thing. You just have to watch your tension to um, see that, your, that all your stitches are um, the same size and that the floats running in the back are not too tight because that would cause the fabric to pucker in the front. So you don't want something like this. You still want the fabric to be um, elastic and uh, be able to stretch. So um, the way you do that is that you make sure that um, your strands are um, the, the strands you have in the back here are um, loose enough. So if you watch those strands, those should not be too tight. If they are too tight, then they will um, cause the fabric to pucker in the front. So I will try to insert a little bit of footage showing you how I knit color work. Um, basically, I uh, Maybe it, maybe it makes sense to first show you um, how I would normally knit with one color. I am a continental knitter, so I always hold my working yarn in the left hand. And um, when I uh, want to um, attach a second color, then I usually um, insert my needle into the stitch that I want to work. And then I make um, some kind of loop. Uh, of the contrast color and then I just um, uh, put it on the working needle and pull it through that stitch. This is how I attach the new um, color. And then I um, have one color as I would usually knit in my left hand and the other color in my right hand. And I actually switch up those colors depending on um, which of the colors is used more in the round. So if I have a pattern like two stitches in a lighter color and three stitches in the darker color, then I would always use the darker color in my left hand as this is the way I'm used to uh, be knitting. And I would keep um, the other color in my right hand and work uh, the contrast color just like um, an English style knitter. And whenever I work um, the contrast color, I will insert my needle into the next stitch. Then I would grab the right hand needle with the left hand and pull the stitches on that right needle a little bit um, apart so that I um, am absolutely sure that there is not uh, too much tension on the strand running in the back and only then I will knit the stitch English style and then continue to work with uh, the main color in my left hand. So I hope this makes sense. So what really um, really helps me is this, um, this motion where I um, stretch the stitches, pull them further apart before I work um, the the stitch in the color that I um, work with my right hand. 
the, this technique really works very well for me. I um, can work color work almost as fast as I can work um, regular one color stockinette stitch. But don't be disappointed if this technique does not work for you. There are many other techniques that people can use um, and that people are actually using very successfully. Um, you can, uh, if you work in English style, you can just switch the colors and um, work them all with your right hand if you want to. I have also seen people um, wrapping um, both colors around their hand on their left hand if they're continental letters and just picking one of them. This technique does not work for me because I always feel like, um, especially in patterns where I have um, one color that I use much more often than another color, just like in a pattern where I have one stitch in a lighter color and five stitches in the darker color, then I always feel like um, the one that is used less gets too loose over time. I cannot have um, my my tension. I cannot um, keep my tension very well. And if I work a uh, color work with more than two colors, I still have the color that is um, appears most in the round that I'm currently working on my left hand. And then I will simply switch um, the two other colors, uh, both in my right hand. I just drop the, the yarn and work one um, stitch and then drop it again and then work the other one. This is a little bit slower, but I have found this is how I am able to keep um, my tension very well. But as always with knitting, this is something that you can just experiment with. Um, there's no right or wrong here, just try different techniques and uh, see what works best for you. Thank you if you have uh, watched uh, all the way up until here. I really hope that the color work section was uh, helpful to you and um, that it will maybe encourage you to try to work color work for the first time. I really assure you it is something um, that is not as difficult as it looks and you really get the hang of it very very fast and I think you will be um, very happy if you see how the colors uh, play with each other and how the pattern develops. That's very very fun when you work color work that you can, um, that your progress is so much more visible uh, than when you just work with one color. So um, let me know if uh, color work is something that you love as well or, that, uh, of, or if it is something that you um, want to try or if that is something that you don't like at all. I'm really interested um, about your thoughts. At the end of each episode, I want to introduce you to another knitter, podcaster or designer. And in this week, I would like you to meet uh, Isabel, who is going under the handle Braebelli. And uh, she has this beautiful sweater, which uh, is a perfect example for intarsia knitting. It is called the True Color Sweater, and it has these lovely big uh, splashes of color on the shoulder. And I really love this design, and uh, you should definitely check out her Instagram. She has uh, many lovely designs, and she is such a creative and uh, wonderful knitter. You should definitely check her out. Thank you so much. If you have watched all the way to the end, I'm very happy that you spent your time with me and I hope you have a very lovely weekend. Bye, until next episode.